everybody, somebody just sent me this DM on Twitter and said, I came across this yesterday. This looks like a uh, they're doing an interview or something like that, and they couldn't figure it out. But basically, they said somebody gave them this, which is an, like an infinitely nested object, um, and they need to write a function that takes in that data and returns the last three pieces of data um, in it. So I thought like, okay, these are always, always fun. I don't run across this type of stuff in my day-to-day -day coding, but whenever somebody, this is called nerd sniping. Someone says, Hey, like this, I'm like, Oh, I wonder if I could figure that out. You know, I, I don't really do too many interviews. So let's write it. I've got the, co the, the code on the left here. This is the same file, but I just want to be able to view it while I'm writing the code here. So first thing we need to do is, oh my gosh, we had to turn GitHub Copilot off. It's just gonna, just gonna solve it for us before we even get into it. So my thought here is that you have to write what's called a recursive function, a function that calls itself infinitely until there is an exit condition, which will be there is no more data in the next property here. Um, so let's write that. I'm gonna write it all inside of this function here because it needs to sort of operate on its own. Um, and we'll probably have what is referred to as a closure. I'll explain that if if that's the route we go. So my thoughts here are we need to make a array of all the letters. Um, and then we need to um, go through each of them passing each object um, in there. So we'll say function get letter, uh, which takes in the data and then returns, or we'll say if uh, there is a data dot, oh, it's not data. Let's, maybe we'll rename that to object or obj. Dot, if there is object dot data, so if there is a letter, then letters dot push uh, object dot data. So I'll push the letter into this array right here. And then down here we'll say uh, if object dot next, then we recall ourselves. This is the recursion part. So we say get letter, recalling this function from within itself, uh, object dot next. So what's gonna, and then we kick it off. So uh, get letter with the example, like whatever is initially passed into this function right here, we kick it off with that. Um, and that will do that. So my question is, is what happens when there is, oh, when there is no more, I, I was thinking like, what happens when there's no more data left, but this thing will stop calling itself when there is no more data left. Um, and then we should simply just return the data. So kick it off, return, or let's just console dot log letters. All right, so we need to run this. Um, so I'm going to run Quaka. Start on current file. Okay, there we go. It's working. Um, our letters is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so then we simply need to return the last three. Um, so let's say const last three is equal to letters dot slice. Um, let's just reverse it. Uh, start at zero and go for three. Oh, <laughs> reverse dot slice. Splice, I always forget them. H, F, oh, and then we got to reverse it again. This is probably not the best way to do it. Let's maybe let's just splice it. So splice, no slice. 
we want to go from letters dot length minus three. There, that's that's way better. Okay, we don't need to reverse it. Just have to remember what the methods are in the array. Okay, uh, and then simply just return last three dot join. Um, then you can use console dot const result and we'll just check with some code result is equal to fgh is that true that's true that's it beautiful um just doing a quick look over if this makes if this seems to be the best. Um, always, I, I told you I would explain the closure thing. This is an example of a closure where um, you have a function here. We have internal scope to this last three. Um, and then we have another function inside of it that will run over and over. And this function reaches outside of its scope into here, but that's okay because it's enclosed inside of this last three function here. That is how I solved it. Uh, there's probably shorter ways to do it. There's probably a hundred different ways to do it. That doesn't matter. When people have these types of interview questions, what they're looking for is how your brain thinks about doing something and keeping it enclosed into one function. It doesn't have to have some sort of scope outside of that function and all that good stuff. So if you've solved it in some other way, I'd love to see it. Put the code down in the comments below.